Hello everyone, it's time for another Rapid Randomizer review, and our story today is... <laughs> Love and Monsters. <laughs> if you want to be surprised by Doctor Who, try a Rapid Randomizer review! It's hard. And that's what you become. Hard. Right, okay. I'm guessing if you've seen this... You either love it or you hate it. I've never met anyone who's just in between on Love and Monsters, you know, they're just kind of like, eh, eh. I, I have no strong opinion either way. I'm, <laughs> I'm in the area where I really love this story. It's certainly not without its problems, and I wouldn't want to see Doctor Who do this kind of story too often. Uh, in terms of structure, it's got an epistolatory structure. It's like it's being told through letters, in this case. Uh, the letters take the place of what we might today call a video blog. Someone just staring into a camera and giving their opinions on things. This is a Dr. Light story. So our protagonist is Elton, who is basically a Doctor Who fan. All of the members of Linda are Doctor Who fans. And I think that's why I love this story so much. I was involved as a very young man in 90s fandom and I have very fond memories of going to church halls and watching sixth generation copies of The Keys of Marinus where you could barely work out what was going on. But I'll tell you what, that snowstorm looked like a proper blizzard. And the great thing about Doctor Who fandom, even now, you know, it's changed because things are so much more professional and the series is so much more loved than it was in the 90s. But Doctor Who fandom brings people together and they don't just share their love for Doctor Who, they share their passion for other things, other shows, other hobbies, and that's what we see the members of Linda do. And um, then, of course, Victor Kennedy comes along. There are various theories of big-name fans that he directly represents. I'm not going to draw that comparison myself. Um, but I think it's fair to say that if you're involved in Doctor Who fandom, we all know a Victor Kennedy. You know, someone who wants things organised and, you know, um, wants fandom to be taken very, 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 very seriously. None of them are as villainous as Victor Kennedy, although, actually, I've heard stories. None of them are alien monsters. But then the plot revolves around actually finding the Doctor, and I don't... <laughs> this isn't the same as going to a convention, you know. This is where the... This is where the fantastical element kicks in. And the relationship Elton forms with Jackie, it's beautiful and it's terrible. And that's the message of this story, you know, life is beautiful and it's terrible, often at the same time. Because, Elton even says, he actually does care for Jackie. And even though his relationship with her started as manipulation, he grows to quite like her and starts to question how it can be right to treat a person in this way. Camille Kaduri is the standout in this story with telling us how Jackie can support Rose going off travelling. And of course, Rose's character is established as quite selfish in this season, but how she will still defend her daughter and defend the Doctor in any way she can. And her rejection of Elton and her reaction to his manipulation is one of the strongest moments in this season for me and it's really important. Elton attempts to redeem himself and things go horribly wrong and his friends suffer quite unduly and again this world is terrible and beautiful in that by loving the Doctor these people are killed. The meditations at the end of this story by Elton that the world is horrible and beautiful and weird and wonderful, it's uncomfortable. And the paving slab joke about a sex life is uncomfortable and it pushes it possibly too far, but at the same time... The whole story has been about this discomfort between our everyday life and when things get out of hand. So I think it is deliberately uncomfortable. Love and Monsters I rate quite highly. It holds up a period of my life which I really enjoyed, 
but reminds me that some elements of that may have been a bit unsavoury at times. It also provides us with an adventure and a look from the outside in as to what Doctor Who stories are like for everyday people, the people who don't get to go in the TARDIS. I give this story 8 out of 10. I understand if you don't. I understand if you give it a 1 if you call it the worst Doctor Who story of all time. I understand where you are coming from in that. But I really enjoy it.